Hello and welcome to another episode of Advanced React WordPress Theme Development. In this video, we are going to learn about how to set up Next.js. So let's begin. So there are a couple of ways to install and set up Next.js. The first one is using either npx or using yarn. Okay, so you can run this command or this one and it automatically sets up all of the dependencies for you. It installs all of the dependencies for you and it also creates basic project structure for you. However, if you go with the manual setup, you would need to install next react react dom and you also have to create your package.json, define these scripts and then you'll need to create those basic files yourself. So let's go with the simpler solution, which is this one. If you don't have the yarn installed, you can install it. And I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Once you hit it, it's going to ask you for what will be the name of your package. So you can see that it's asking what is the project name. Uh, since we are running this in the root of the project, which is Next.js Headless WordPress, and we know that our backend is actually in the backend directory, and we would like to have our frontend, which is our Next.js application, in the frontend directory. So it will be good to name this as frontend and let's hit enter. And as you can see that installing react, react dom and next. So it's basically doing the same thing as for the manual setup, but it's just that it's going to also add the basic files that are required. Okay. Okay. So let me show you the directory structure now. So if you look at the front end, it's install all of the packages. Okay. And then if you look at the package.json, it's created uh, these scripts, which is for development, next dev, for build, there is next build, and for start, it's next start, uh, which means that if you want to test how it's going to perform in production, you can run npm run build, and then do npm run start, so it's going to start a development server, you can test it how it's going to look like in the f after deployment, and this is for development, okay, and as you can see that it's installed the next React and React DOM packages, and this is named it as frontend. I think we can name this package as. I think we can rename this package. I'm renaming it as Imran et Sayyid Next.js Headless WordPress. Okay, the the version number we can keep it 1.0.0. Is it private? You can set that to true if you want to keep it private. Else, set to false. So that's what we have here. We have the, some readme, which we can ignore for now. You've got a yarn lock file since we use yarn to install it. And then you also have the styles directory. So you can see you've got some global styles. Uh, you've got home.module.css. So all of these styles are there. And then in the public directory, you have favicon, you have Vercel, And then inside of pages directory, you have underscore app.js which is the main file of the project and then it's importing the global CSS over here. Also there is an index.js file where it's just exporting a home function, uh, react function and it has the header for the, all of that stuff. And basically how it works in Next.js is that if you create a file called index.js inside of the directory called pages, uh, then it's going to serve all of the content that is returned by index.js uh, function, re react function uh, onto the home page. Okay, so let me show that to you. So you can see that it's uh, it's telling us that you can do yarn dev, starts development server, you can very well do npm run dev also, it doesn't have to be yarn dev, it's up to you which, which one you want to choose. And then you, of course, you have to go inside of the front end and run that because it's installed all of the packages inside the front end. So if you take a look at the directory structure now, you can see that you've got a front end folder. So let's clear it and let's go inside of the front end. And uh, instead of using yarn dev, I'm going to use npm run dev. You can choose to use what you want. And then it's running the next dev and which is basically uh, this script, you can rename it also. Uh, if you want to rename the script to something else, you know, ABC, whatever, then, uh, you know, you can do npm run ABC, whatever, and it's going to start the development server on uh, for you using the next dev command. 
Okay, so now you can see that it's started the development server on the localhost 3000. So I'm just going to open that up for you. Now you can see that it says welcome to Next.js, getting started, uh, documentation, example, all of that information. So where is that coming from? It's coming from the index.js uh, and this is all of the content uh, that you can see over here. All right. Awesome. And then it's also importing the style and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the um, style.css. We don't need it. And we're also going to get rid of all of the content from here. So we'll just say div hello world. Okay, and instead of calling it home, we can just call it index for now. And then we can delete this global styles. We don't need it. We're going to use our own stuff. Then we're going to set up the uh, Tailwind uh, CSS and as well as SAS. Okay. And we don't need the API over here because we don't want to use the custom API. So we're going to delete the API folder. We're going to fetch all of the data from WordPress backend. Okay. And then this is the underscore app.js. So you can see that uh, it's automatically created the my app and it's passing the component and the page props into it. So I'm going to just get rid of that and keep it. Okay. So if you take a look, what does this underscore app.js file do? So it talks about that Next.js uses the app component to initialize all of the pages. Of course, you can override this particular file according to your needs and you can customize it. But it's basically used to initialize all of the pages. And you can do different things like persistent layout between page changes, keep the state uh, when navigating between pages, custom error handling, uh, injecting additional data into pages, add global CSS like they have. Uh, so I've removed the global CSS, but you can include that here. And to override it, this is how you do it. I'm going to ignore that for now since we are not overriding it just right this minute. And also the component prop that you see over here, this one, okay, uh, is the active page. So whenever you navigate between routes, let's say you go to slash about or slash contact us, uh, then the component will change to the new page. So whichever component that would be. So for example, there was like, uh, if I would create something like about.js. Okay, and I just say export default, export default function about and return about for now and see what happens. Now you can see that you've got hello world because in the index.js that's what we have. We don't have anything else. You can also get rid of the next head. And if we go ahead and go to about, you'll see now we have the about showing over here, right? Which is awesome. So it's so easy to go ahead and create our components because next.js is going to automatically create that route for you. Okay. So if you create something like about.js is going to create uh, the route for you and it will be available at slash about if you create something like contact dash us dot js it's going to be available at contact dash us uh, route okay so that's how the route you is used and then every time the route changes it's going to use that particular component so in this case now it's using the about component okay now you'll say to me Imran tell me why did you not import react on top is that not required like why didn't you do import react from react like so well the reason for this is because it next just automatically takes care of that you don't have to import react like so right so you just need to return the valid react component and that's it you don't have to worry about anything else and by the way it also supports typescript as well so if you want to use typescript you can you know use the tsx and then write tries typescript and return the component as well okay and then if you check this page props what is this page props so if you take a look so page props is an object with an initial props that were preloaded by your page by one of the data fetching method so for example if you use a data fetching methods uh, for example that's been shown over here 
So there are different data fetching methods like so get static props, get server side props. If you use one of these methods to return some data, uh, then it will automatically pass that data through the page props and that data will then be available to any of your components over here. All right. So that's the reason for that. Okay. And this favicon that you see over here is coming from this one. And then you ha also have the worst cell uh, that's being worst cell SVG, which is this one. Okay, great. So I don't, I don't think we need the worst cell SVG. We can get rid of that. And uh, now we can go back to the index.js. Brilliant. And then if you're wondering what is this dot next uh, folder is, so this is where Next.js keeps all of its files, like it keeps the cache over here. Whenever it creates any static pages, you can see that it it puts all of the static pages over here. So you can see that pages and then this is created, right? So Next.js offers server side rendering, which means that it would automatically uh, create the page for you with all of the data. So it's going to inject all of the data and the create the HTML page for you before it's actually rendered uh, onto the front end. So it, it supports server side rendering by default. So you can see that's the index.js. We had created the about.js. So that's the about.js that we have. Okay. So it keeps all of, all of these, uh, you know, pages over here inside of the next directory. Okay. Brilliant. So that's that. So I believe, uh, we have set up our project successfully and the only thing that we're going to change over here we're going to add over here is add node options equals inspect what this is going to do for you is that it's going to allow you to debug things server side okay so it's going to give you the node.js debugger so, so let me show that to you so i'm going to restart my development server i'm going to say npm run dev and now you can see that it's using the node options equals inspect and it's using the node.js inspector you can check this out information uh, if you want to know more about the node.js debugger you can check all of the information here how it works um, and by default it's going to listen to this port number so now you can see it's added this dedicated dev tool for node.js and if you click on that now you can see that it's got uh, all of the information that you actually see in the terminal right so it's got the debugger attached to it and then you'll be able to debug anything server side. I mean, not only you can just look at over here, but you can look at over here as well. So when you are using the, uh, the functions to fetch the data, which are the data, data fetching, which are the data fetching methods, which is, uh, you get static props or, you know, get server side props, etc. Then at that time inside of those function, you'll be able to console log and, and see the data into this debugger. Uh, over here right so which will be quite useful awesome great so that's that uh, so I hope we have set up so which is great so now we have set up uh, and now you can see that it says and now you can see that it says deb debugger attached yeah okay great so congratulations everyone we have successfully set up next year's project and we will continue further into our next tutorial all right. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And the, all of the codes for this repository is going to be available here on Imran H. Sayyad, Next.js, Headless WordPress. Make sure to star the repository just like the beautiful people have. And please follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle, as you can see, is Imran H. Sayyad. And um, I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Oh, 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 oh,